Hey guys, B. Rams here, HVAC Greatness. Hope you're having a great Wednesday. Happy Hump Day. Um, wanted to pop in here and just do a real quick update on where we stand on our little photo contest. It's not too late. If you guys want to go ahead and throw your contribution in there, we'll go ahead and accept that. But uh, let's just look real quick at what we've got. Now, the competition, we're calling it here the Most Abused Component Photo Contest. So we're kind of trying to establish some stuff that's... Uh, that's just based on uh, abused equipment. And so I stuck this one in here. I just pulled this off the internet. This is not my camera, but man, what a good example. This blower wheel is caked up. Uh, you should be capturing these pictures, by the way. This is good for your uh, uh, for sharing with your customers as to what happens if it continues to progress down certain roads, at least in that photo. Uh, first up is Kevin uh, Kevin Brand, Kevin Scott Brand. He uh, he put this package unit up here. Got to love that access panel, guys. Duct tape. And uh, anyway, <laughs> that's a good one. Let's let's go down the line here and see what we got. So that's Kevin's. Uh, oh, Kevin put another one in here. Let's see here. Keeps getting better, he says. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the relay, uh, the the stake is uh, bent because it's just hanging there. Uh, gosh, man, all those holes in the panel to mount your controls, and they don't use them. Yeah, well, okay, let's go down the line here and look at the next one. Uh, Brent Zebel, Zebel, uh, Brent. I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, we got to meet so I can pronounce your name right. Uh, so yeah, here's the intake on the uh, on the back end of the motor. Uh, wow. I mean, how's that motor not overloading and overheating? Uh, this is a very good entry. Love it, Brent. Let's go with the next one. Uh, TJ, where you at? <laughs> yeah, TJ, that one's looking pretty abused. We're going to have to start uh, working on that one. <laughs> I think that was a joke entry, guys. Uh, let's see here. Chris, let's see here. Chris has got some coils. Uh, looks like the aluminum's flaking away pretty bad. Uh, yeah, this uh, this is a pretty good example here of just letting the stuff go. Uh, Davis heating and air. They, sorry guys, the computer's responding a little slow. Uh, looks like yeah. Oh gosh, heat exchangers eat all up. So uh, I'm surprised the blower don't blow the flame out. <laughs> That's a good one too. Uh, it's hard for people who don't know what they're looking at. Uh, let's say you're trying to show that to your customer uh, as to what that should look like, unless you put a new one beside it. Uh, David over at Hero, David Postel, um, yeah, we've got uh, a pretty caked up evap coil there. Looks like it's inside of a package unit. I can't tell, but uh, it's all aluminum. Uh, this this is what's going to happen, guys, when the equipment's not properly maintained. That's a very good entry. Man, you guys are making it tough. Paul, what the heck have you sent? What is that? Water damage? Looks like, uh, I can't tell. Oh, that's a, a boiler, I guess. Uh, I don't work on much uh, many boiler systems, but uh, yeah, we got some copper tubing coming in and geez, what the heck is that? That's a mess. You boiler guys may know more about that. I'm more of a heat pump furnace guy. Uh, Paul sends another one out here. Paul Connolly. This is awesome, guys. Look at this. Okay, so if you can't see it from the video, uh, basically you can see through uh, the coil guard. This is actual coil, as it hopefully should be, although it's not very clean. And all the fins are gone, and all that is is copper tubing, or maybe aluminum tubing. Tubing, I can't tell from this angle, but the actual tubing. So that it's not connected to the heat exchange plates, which are basically aluminum fins. And so uh, that looks like dog pee, right? That's that's what happens when your dog is over there just eating it away. Yeah, he is a dog dog peed all over the condenser. Um, Bill Ash, good one, Bill. It looks like the underside of an A coil. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty bad, Bill. That's a good one too, my friend. Man, this is going to be tough. Uh, Mason, he's pulled the whole. He's pulled all the coil guards off, so we can see the fins. Yeah, this is a good one. See, it's actually peeled away here like a sheet of paper or something. Guys, uh, save these pictures um, and put a brand new clean one beside it. And I'll show you how to do that a little later on how to leverage that. There, I mean, you can leverage it, obviously, in that in of itself. But uh, this one was run over by a car and was still holding a full charge. AC actually saved the home from being damaged. Well, 
That's a very expensive uh, car bumper uh, or car post. Yeah, wow. So that's not more. That's not so much as uh, letting it go. Although it looks like it's in pretty bad condition. It looks pretty filthy. But uh, good one, Omar. Appreciate that. All right. What else we got? Uh, ben. Looks like another furnace. Oh wow. Yeah, that's just coming apart. I can't tell what that's on. Is that a rooftop package engine or something, or is that a just a no? That's a close up of a looks like an upflow furnace. Anyway, uh, that's a pretty far gone one, Ben. Uh, time to replace that rascal. And let's see here. If we scroll, scroll. Work with me here. Uh, Carmine sends. That looks like a up. That looks like another coil, maybe. My gosh, what the heck is that growing there? Guys, this is gold. This is gold. This is really important when you're uh, when you're when you're um, showing your customers where this will ultimately go if they don't stay on top of it. Uh, yeah, another, another uh, corner of the coils, all the aluminums eat up. Probably probably dog peeing on it again. They just get their spot. Uh, what do you do to prevent your dogs from peeing on it? I guess we could put a, a little voltage charge on that unit. And <laughs> that would stop it. Okay, this isn't, uh, oh gosh, uh, looks like maybe a, I can't sell what this is. Is it a Bosch or a Heil or something? Anyway, they, they, they are, they're discharging the, uh, the top air out the side. Guys, the units are not designed to handle static pressure from a duct system. <laughs> it's a free flow. Got to give the clearance around uh, the, the units as per the recommendation of the manufacturer. Uh, yeah, that's a good one, Dave. Uh, but again, that's more of a misapplication than a, than a, uh, Lack of maintenance. Uh, Matt puts uh, not exactly abuse, he said, but it's f uh, funny nonetheless. So yeah, right over here on the blower side, right by the filter. Uh, oh, wow. I mean, picture says a thousand words. Sam, uh, Samuel, sorry, if you go by Samuel. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's actually oxidized to the point where the discharger liquid line, I can't tell what that is, is coming coming loose. Uh, as it goes into the coil, pretty or is that evaporator? No, that's got to be a condenser. Uh, anyway, uh, that one's that one's pretty bad off. Uh, what else we got here? Here's another one. Jason Barnett put in a slant coil. Uh, again, very similar, just a total buildup. Um, the, the thing to keep in mind on these evaporator coils when you're talking to your customer is. Uh, your entire house's air passes through the air conditioning about seven times per hour of operation, depending on its uh, its its relation to the cubic volume of the of the space. But basically, all of the air that your customer is breathing is passing through this, and that need that needs to be brought to their attention. Uh, most of disgusting of app coal I've come across, uh, no question, that Jason, that was pretty bad. And there's a few more comments. They lived there for ten years. Uh, I only found the the cupboard frame of it um okay yeah just ridiculous good stuff thanks jason let's see what, what else we got there uh who won well we hadn't got there yet we're gonna go ahead and i, I commented on there let's just try to run it through june uh paul put a uh, some compressor leads on there yeah that pretty much had it um that's uh is that a lack of maintenance well it's uh it's you know I know that running high head pressure and stuff like that will over amp and you know it'll it'll run some hot spots for you, but um, what can we do to maintain this kind of stuff? You know what we used to do is uh, obviously when it gets to this point you want to go ahead and pull that and rewire that and put some uh, new leads on there if if the studs are salvageable, um, you know the, the terminals if they're salvageable, but. You know, if you can get to that beforehand, you can go ahead and when you're doing your maintenance, go ahead and pull that stuff off and uh, clean it up. Tighten the uh, the the bite on the on the clip. Um, you know, contact cleaner spray is really good for cleaning a lot of this stuff out. Um, I don't know what what do you do uh, on, on stuff like that, guys? Let's see, we got another comment here. Oh, Michelle uh, says it smells like rotting meat. <laughs> yeah, that looks like another evap coil. Wow, yeah. So that when that stuff is just left to do its damage to the to the to the coils, um, it has an effect. Anyway, I uh, want to share this to everybody and kind of encourage you to keep sending. Um, the, again, what what I was going to do on this is give away a copy of uh, of your technician flow chart and the uh, we call it the uh, 
consultative technician system. It's just the base uh, flow chart. The, the system goes a little bit deeper, but it'll really help you on organizing your technician's uh, steps and making sure that nothing's missed, uh, in, particularly in inter interacting with your customer. We want to make sure that they're involved. And in doing so, that builds uh, it builds great value, it builds connection, it builds trust between you, uh, well, between your technicians and, and your uh, customer. And so, yeah, we'll look at this, and uh, as we go along, we may have to uh, go ahead and give this out to several of, of you guys who contributed. There, some of these are just too close. So, uh, yep, keep sending them. Uh, we'll, we'll measure it here for another week or so. We'll, we'll pull our winners. But uh, we really appreciate uh, everybody contributing, and you know, not just to this, but to the group. You guys are awesome. You're great. We're always cultivating our greatness, and that's what this group is about. It's about building a business that is great, not in our own eyes, but in our customers' eyes, because, you know, that's what matters. You know, we can do the best work possible, but it's the way that that work is interpreted and perceived by your customer that really matters. And so all of these things matter. You know, we, we think, well, we, the way we answer the phone doesn't matter. Oh, yes, it does. Well, you know, my customers love me because of my work. Well, maybe they do, but it's really important for you to have a communication method that expresses the, the level of quality that you're actually inserting into your project, in, in your processes, in, into the work that you do. And so how do we do that without reaching around and patting on our own back and bragging? There's processes, and that's what we're talking about here. And that's what the, uh, the program I'm going to be sharing with you guys called the Consultative uh, Technician System. Uh, I think that'll clear that up for you really well. And uh, for those of you who have contributed, thank you. And for those of you who are going to contribute, just keep your eyes open. You see something, snap a picture, just drop it in the uh, in the post at your uh, at your convenience. Again, we'll try to run this on through at least another week. You know, my, my intent was run it through the month, so that's another week and a half. So let's just do that. Let's run it through the end of the month and bring in some more. If you want to pin it to the top of the group so you can contribute, have a little fun while you're out there working and getting, uh, getting through the summer. Midpoint of summer is coming up. I put a post in there. August 1st is midpoint. So we're all the way over halfway through June. We got July to go. Come on, guys, let's get it done. Remember, building um, for your the rest of your year goes beyond building your bank account. You got to be selling maintenance agreements. You got to be pre scheduling work for your off season. You got to be building relationships. You've got to be doing more than just making money today. Okay? If you convert your customers to a maintenance agreement, you you assess a value of $1,000 per year in revenues per maintenance agreement. What happens when you add 100 maintenance agreements this summer? That's $100,000 per year in future revenues going forward on the average. On the average. It really depends on your market, how you price things, how thorough your processes are in identifying issues and presenting them to your customers in a way that they can perceive it as value and not as a, a sales uh, approach and so um yeah so those maintenance agreements been telling you you guys take care be safe out there pete ramsey hvac greatness i will catch you guys on the next one bye-bye